None of man's fantasies of evil can compare with the reality of Jaws. Bad fish, but I'll catch him and kill him. Did you hear your father out of the water now? This shark, swallow you whole. From the best-selling novel, Jaws, rated PG. Maybe too intense for younger children. Hi, Jeremy. So you pick Sharknate, Sharknado, huh? Sharknado. Is that how? Is that what it's called? Sharks like all in a twelve of them, or something like that. Terry was in one of those too. She was in quite a few, I think. Yeah, good I for think, her. I, I think that was After kind of a research. Kind of of <laughs> then it's the guy from Nine O T One O, and um, rest in peace, Luke. Is it Luke Perry? Luke Perry. Uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't him that was in. No, movie, but <laughs> I was just connecting the dots. He said, <laughs> "I was just, I was just like, whoa, wait a minute." Yes, Sorry, that went a yes, little bit to the deep yes, end. Yes, no, yes, no, uh, no, 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 no. Um, R.I.P. Uh, Luke Perry. Yeah, no, Nam, um, you. That tells you when we started recording this podcast, right? Nam, um, I honestly surprised you picked this one. The real, real talk. Not this is not script. Okay, I'm I, not, I don't have paper in front of me. Like real talk. I didn't think you were going to pick this movie because I didn't like choose Sharknado. <laughs> 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 no, you did, but the movie I'm going to really tell them. <laughs> the real movie I'm about to tell them is uh, Jaws. And <laughs> Why would I choose Sharknado? <laughs> <laughs> because it's you. You would so do it. Don't even lie. <laughs> uh, I would probably choose the human centipede before I choose Sharknado. Uh, Jaws, yes. Yeah, yeah, ahead. yeah. No, no, no. I was surprised you picked Jaws uh, as, as, the, as, as, as our oldies movie, Yeah, because right? like, uh, honestly, knowing you for so long, we really never had discussion of like oldie movies, like sixties. Maybe yeah. I have brought it up to you a lot of movies I watched in the sixties, yeah. but you haven't really brought up. So like, you picked Jaws was one of the few. Like I feel like that maybe that would have came from me than mm -hmm. from you at some point of the series. So why Jaws of all, all of a sudden? Well, all right. So Steven Spielberg, one, and you know it, he's it amazing. Was, Go on. It was it was definitely the the kickstart, like the part the the kickstart of his kind of career. Mm -hmm. Um, two, it's, it's one of those movies that's just a classic that for me, I have seen as a kid and it's terrified me. Of course you mm -hmm. see, you see the shark at Universal Studios and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And uh, for the listeners, I have not seen Jaws. So. Yeah. Um, the only thing is, is that I don't remember, like, I really don't remember Jaws. Like I've only watched it when I was a kid. Mm hmm. Um, so I've been always meaning to want to go watch it, you know, because they, they, they've had the, 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 the promotions where like they do, um, in Oklahoma, they have a, the water park called white water where mm. there's like a lazy river, which I'm sure most people can understand what the lazy, uh, lazy pool, lazy yeah. river, whatever you want to call it is, um, where you're, they have like the, uh, the drive in where they show the movie on the big screen next to the river and you just. You just sit there and just right. kind of mosey in the river or the, the, the water. Um, so I always wanted to go do that, but I never ended up doing that. Um, mm -hmm. The next, of course, as you get older, you hear so much about it as being such a classic movie, Some one of the movies that you can just watch consistently over and over again and that it really doesn't age. Um, I wanted to revisit it again. Mm -hmm. Because one, it, it's one of those movies that I was kind of surprised. Um, I forgot that it was it was made in like 79, I think. A um, burial, oh, barely. Yeah. A 78, 79. Um, I feel that's actually, no, I'm probably dead wrong on that. Mm -hmm. But um, it was an older movie. So uh, Jaws was actually made in 75. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I knew I was dead wrong. For some reason, I was thinking 78, 79. I was thinking of Alien. That's, that's oh, okay. Because okay. Alien was the other I was going to say, we had to have a conversation about Enter the Dragon yeah. that I thought, yeah. I thought it was an 80s movie, but it was 79. Yeah, so. yeah. So there was Enter the Dragon. I think we talked about Enter the Dragon and we talked about mm -hmm. Alien. Um, but I mm -hmm. wanted to go a little bit more deeper into the 70s. So mm -hmm. uh, Jaws, uh, just because I wanted to experience um, that movie again and mm -hmm. just see where still Spielberg started uh, okay. before he started kind of getting into his uh into Are his you run. a fan of water movies like that like or just maybe sharks in general like deep blue sea or that um the mag or you know anything that has to do with water disasters or anything like that are you a fan of those kind of films i don't like go out and just like like 
look for them. But I do, I do find it kind of neat that the environment, the the space. Um, I hadn't seen the Meg yet. I heard that was a really fun movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard that was just a pure fun movie. But Deep Blue Sea, mm-hmm. I've seen that. You know, The Shock ate me. Lake Placid, uh, maybe uh, or Piranha Three, Piranha, Piranha stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I do. I have. I've seen those movies before. Um, so you. those those are kind of a enjoyable in a in a weird way. But I think the beauty of it is is, is that I, something that you and I had talked about um, after watching was it Alien. For me, after watching Alien Covenant, mm-hmm. was that I was really tired of the CG, mm-hmm. just CG everything. And yeah. I feel that, and it's funny because that's how this this movie worked. And the one of the interests that I really wanted to see is because the shark itself was just crappy. Mm-hmm. Like Spielberg, when the shark when they made the shark, Spielberg was just like this shark looks like crap. Mm-hmm. So in order for them to f- to make it work, they had to come up with creative ways to to angle it to make it look different. To try to sell, to to make it more um, sellable, or convincing, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes less is more, right? Um, that's the same thing they did with Aliens too, mm-hmm. or Alien. Actually, I'm sorry, yeah, Alien. Yeah. Uh, they did with Alien, which is why I wanted to choose one of the two movies, and I ended up going with Jaws. Is is that instead of having the the reliance of CG being what scares you, is being able to to get the different camera angles, to get the different moods to make it work okay um forcing people to do something with it instead of just going hey we have all this technology to do everything with it you know like star wars with all the cg uh, when they remade all the star wars with cg it was horrible so you hit the nail on the head because going into this trailer uh, looking at the trailer it was less was more because you saw a, you saw a bunch of people getting hurt and disasters hitting but you only saw the shark Actually, I don't think you ever saw the shark. You've seen you pictures yeah. of him. Yeah, you, you don't You've really seen pictures see, yeah. of different sharks, but you haven't actually seen what he looks like. And so... I don't know why I laughed so hard when he... In the trailer, he just... He ate the dude, and he just, like, spun around. I just laughed. Right. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Yes. That was really, really funny. Cause, like, Dark humor because, is me. There you go. Right, but, like, at the same time, I think it was funnier because no one really noticed except the people on the beach, and the kids were still playing. Like, like, did you not hear this giant scream? Or that shark does it silently or something. I, I'm kind of curious on, on the conversation they had in the trailer, too, because I was just like, did somebody scream Barracuda? Because... I don't understand the whole barracuda shark conversation right. either. Just but, like if you scream barracuda, no one bats an eye. But if you, but that's the type. This is the type of trailer. Uh, if you do a good job, that can catch a lot of people of, you know, the mysterious of what this thing looks like or what it can do, uh, how much disaster it can do, all that kind of stuff. So I thought like the trailer did a really good job of it because they really try to focus on the cast members trying to figure out what it is instead of just showing. They could just show a bunch of clips of the shark doing disaster stuff. They could have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was a uh, really suspenseful in, in the way they filmed it. Mm-hmm. And, and the was music was, wow, that music was strong in that trailer. I was going to say, it's just like, it's like you hear the music, you're just like, that's very Spielberg. Yeah. Which is weird because we're, we're used to Spielberg's later movies, right? Mm-hmm. Before his early ones. When we're, there's the iconic Jaws songs, like, do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna. But besides I, it, that, that one. Did they do the other one? Because I thought another movie does it, and it's like, dun, 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 dun. like the heavy, like, like hell, cellos and bass. I don't know. Okay, like, okay, maybe. Sure. Okay. I don't, I don't well, know I watch it. I will it. talk about like that's the song I'm talking about. Okay. And so one one day, one day when we hit it, like we hit it into that particular pod, or podcast episode, what might be like two years down the line, but Jeremy will be like, it is that song. <laughs> That's the song from the Jaws yes. episode we had talked about. Yes. I want yes. you guys to remember this. Yes. Episode whatever the number it is. But no. Uh, we don't do numbers here. <laughs> I know, right? But I am uh, I am intrigued by it because Steven Spielberg, you know, he's he's such a good director. He's probably up there as one of my top ten favorite directors. Uh, he's, Easily. Yeah. He's, just, he's just really good at – storytelling and he's really good at getting you getting into getting you into it even if you don't think you're going to get into it yeah it's interesting i like that yeah like artificial intelligence yes i feel that way yes but we will talk about this movie well, that's actually my, for, for me sadly enough that's one of my least favorites but yeah i see yeah. where you're coming from you know I, I see where yeah, you're, yeah, 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 yeah yeah anyway uh yeah for the as the trailer in itself it definitely sold me on the idea of rewind wanted to rewatch the movie just because it's 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 so basic Mm-hmm. And it's so suspenseful. You definitely hear the music and the influence that Spielberg's had in his in his life 
um, in the future. But uh, I can't wait to see it. Um, mm-hmm. It should be fun to watch and uh, fun to talk about after these uh, commercial breaks. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode as part of the In Game Boss program a network of gaming and other variety shows. And remember, you can find all these shows on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. All you have to do is just follow and subscribe and enjoy all our other variety shows. Like the In-Game Boss Podcast, When Jeremy Met Nam, and Finally Do a Movie Podcast, Bond Never Dies, In the Cabinet Sessions. So thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back to Shark Week, <laughs> and to to when Jeremy met Nam. To Shark Week, <laughs> Nam. That was a hell of a pick. That was that was tell, one hell of a movie, wasn't it? Tell me, how did you feel about it? Uh, uh I felt it came. It's all I felt. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, 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 how about you? You you first. Me first? You first. The shock ate me. Right. I was actually um surprisingly enough for a movie that old. I was pretty blown away. That, I was pretty that, blown that, away. That was what I was gonna ask. I forgot it like when you asked me about that. I was like, Yeah, go ahead. So I was gonna ask Do you twenty nineteen, this movie was made in nineteen seventy five. Does it stand to yeah. the test of time? Yeah. I was so blown away of the fact of the production of that film, yes. of what they had done with that. The fact that like they did a good job keeping something a mystery and building it up, yeah, and executed beautifully. Yeah, yeah. And it's just it goes to show it's amazing. Like it's it's crazy to know it's one of Spielberg's first movies about a shark. That they made a that. a shark to something exciting. Yeah. I know I wouldn't be excited for sharks. <laughs> what'd you what you actually think of the actual mechanical shark that they have? I thought they like after you, what we what I heard about how like it did not pan out they what they what yeah, they wanted to do. One, one, they didn't it didn't look the way one they wanted to look. It but they dumb. did the I think it still pulled off good because they I guess they had to rethink how to present this shark. Yeah. Without I bet you money they wanted to show this shark way earlier, probably what the film was trying yeah. to present itself, but they knew it that the way it looks like we got to keep it more of a mystery and and then show it when is the right time to show it yeah which at, they pulled at, that off really well at the right moments mm-hmm. make you make you just you know just uh, it's amazing it just make you bite into the suspense of it all no right? pun intended yeah um mm-hmm. because that was i know we talked about it during our trailer talk that it was a uh, I wanted to see what they would do with the actual prosthetics because we're so used to CGI now yeah. that I guarantee you would have seen the shark like a, like at the very beginning of the mm-hmm. movie, just you know doing a song and dance before he goes back into the water. But mm-hmm. but it, I think the way they had to make it work just was so beautifully done. Yeah, I really like the fact that. The moment you saw the first ch- first person that died, and I'm not at talking the very, about, very beginning? not I'm not talking about the very beginning where the woman died. I'm talking about where the one that really mattered, where there was witnesses, and that was at the uh, uh, that was at just a little get together, boy? yeah, just a little get together before the fourth of, fourth of July week, week came up. Yeah, so, um, you know, the setup with all the all the people, some people were swimming in the water. This kid was out too far with his raft, lost the kid was the first one to go, mm-hmm. and. Just seeing that geyser of blood just come yeah. up. Didn't, that's the first thing that I did not expect to ha- look like oh that. Oh, my God. That, thought was, it was that, was be, a, that was a violent death, yeah, wasn't I th- it? I thought it was going to be the no traditional dr- drag sink, under the water, water blood, blood coming up. up. But no, it's, they it, went full throttle with it. it. It's what you. It, I don't know why. That's kind of what we expect, right, from, from the movies. I guess we got that from the very first death, right, mm-hmm. the drag on water. But it, not even talking about just the first death. It was all the misdirection that came came to the first death yeah because you sat there and you're watching it and you're thinking to yourself well it could be this person it could be this person Mm -hmm. it could be the dog which i think the dog is gone oh yeah Uh, (laughs) oh yeah because because he was hollering for the dog but the dog we we never saw the dog again we just didn't see him die. right but uh just the misdirection and 
because when you're watching it, you're thinking to yourself, "Oh, these 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 are all could be candidates." And what's beautiful about it, this is your first time watching it, mm-hmm. and for me, it's been so long that I couldn't really remember. Mm-hmm. I remember the I, I I did remember the kid in the raft died, but there's a lot of other things that happened in the movie that I just completely went blank on. But mm-hmm. I think the misdirection in this movie was very beautiful because it did do a good job of making you sit there and go. Is it that person? Is that person going to die? Somebody's going to die. Mm-hmm. I don't know who's going to die, but somebody's going to die. Right. I love the fact that the story felt very believable to the fact that you had Mar- uh, Chief Martin, the cop, trying to figure Brody. out, trying to figure out, is it a shark or not a shark? You have you have the um, the um, shark scientist or shi- shark expert come in. Um, Hooper. Uh, Quint is it Quint? No, Hooper. No, no, Hooper. Hooper, Hooper, Hooper was the, yeah, Hooper yeah. Was the yeah. science, scientist. Yeah, and Quint Hooper was coming the, uh, in talking about came in, in because he heard about the story and he was interested himself to figure out what it was. Mm-hmm. Talking about this is not what you guys expect to be, and then on top of this, your most love hated character in the story, where it makes sense in his way, Mayor Larry Vaughn, where he was talking about like. I wouldn't Weak. say loved at all. <laughs> I I I I wouldn't say I I understand he was trying to protect yeah, yeah. the city. But he was an understandable ahead. hated character. Yeah. Because the fact that like we cannot shut this down just because of accusation, but at the same time we can't shut it down because the town needs money. This is our this is our this is our season. We this is where all our money comes in to last us for you know for the year to come. Yeah. And you understand everybody everybody's reasoning was made sense regards if you disagree with him or not or differ disagree yeah, with him or you, not i mean they do a good, you do a good job of just disagreeing with the mayor because you you understand that he he's doing it because he is trying to drive money to the to the small summer resort or small summer um city that he that they live in and that in order to do it, they need tourists and people to come to mm-hmm. the beaches so they can spend their money on like the the accessories and stuff like mm-hmm. that that goes with it. But he also does a good job of making you hate him because obviously he plays the other way, right? right. So it's just like, well, you can't guarantee me it's and a shark. It, and it is such a fantastic job of the first half getting to making it a mystery so the characters can be built up to this mystery of finding out oh, if yeah. it's the shark or not and then the second half was just straight we're going yeah. after the shark nothing else matters anymore I, I don't know if it was a question of whether it's a shark or not it's 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 a way it's it's how to get to the point where we need to get rid of the it where is the line that goes too far yeah where we have to do something about the issue that's yeah. ahead of us we thought we caught the shark the scientist says that you guys, are, you know, did not catch the shark. You can cut it open to figure it out. That you know, mm-hmm. and the and the the mayor did everything that he could to turn a blind eye to mm-hmm. to it and to avoid paying somebody to yeah. take care of it, all that stuff. And, and it had to get to the point, it, like it's a tell two stories, right? Mm-hmm. It's the hunting the shark and the before the hunting the shark, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they were so, going to hire Quint, the 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 guy that volunteered, he would do it, but. The problem is he was asking more than what the bounty was for the grand. shark. Yeah, yeah, the bounty was three thousand, I believe, right? Three thousand. Well, no, yeah. So the mom offered three thousand yeah. dollars. The mom of the vic- uh, of the kid who was uh, on the ra- mm. on the uh, floaty. We'll call him Timmy. That that got killed, and she offered three thousand. Of course, Quentin was saying. I can find him for three thousand dollars, but if you want me to catch him or kill him or whatever, then it's ten thousand dollars because it's mm-hmm. going to cost way more than that mm-hmm. to 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 kill the the shark. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you watched throughout the first movie or the first half of the movie, and you and it got to the point where the mayor couldn't do anything more, like mm-hmm. he couldn't turn a blind eye. We know that his money is out the door because if they don't kill the shark, then there's no. Mm-hmm. There's there's no uh, there's no tourism there's no money there's nothing that comes back to the city which honestly I think even after they kill the the shark there's no money going back no no you no. lost like three or four people there and and that was the negligence of uh, that was the negligence of um, of the mayor you know the beautiful thing about this movie is because uh, just like the first half um, and we'll get into the second half the first half of this movie um, there's something that I always live by just by personally in my life is that, you know, the easy answer is not always the right answer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the easy answer for for the, the cop, uh, for uh, Brody, was to just buy into what 
the mayor is saying, even though it's against your best judgment, right? Mm-hmm. Just compromise. The truth of the matter is, is that he has every a right and authority to shut down the beach. Mm-hmm. Well, if he knew there's a shark attack. And of course, it got brought back uh, when the mom mm-hmm. of the kid came up to him and had that really powerful scene to me where she just slapped him and just told him, is like, you, you knew that there was a shark attack that happened a week ago or last week, mm-hmm. and you did nothing to stop this. Now my son is dead. Mm-hmm. And it is very true. Like the easy answer is to just buy into to, to what the mayor is saying to get money for the, for the city, whether or not you let it down or whatever. But the real answer, the real thing you need to do is take care of the shark, close down the close down the beach and not have to deal with it. Right. Because also, too, it also comes to a reality that his even Brody's own son was almost a victim to this situation, which is funny because we talked about we we, we talked about misdirect, too, because we joked about that. Uh, Mm -hmm. You and I, while we were watching the movie, I sat there and just like watched the shark go into the pond. Because um, he he didn't want his son to play it like on the like on in, 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 in the major part of the yeah, ocean. Yeah, yeah. So he said, "Go play in the pond with the other. Um, have the kids play take, over there. Take the boat and go over there yeah. and that one. So it's a little safer, smaller. Yeah, and like, it was it was way off. Yeah, no, like the shark was able to get or Jaws was able to get in there and mm-hmm. take and and uh, do damage and kill a couple of people over there or kill one person over mm-hmm. there and put his kid into shock. I mean, that's what ended up finally putting uh, the mayor over the edge. Right. But it was just one of those things that you're just like, wow, this, there's nowhere safe. No. Like and, this, and, this, this thing has been like, this, this thing has, has a brain. Like it doesn't, it doesn't right. have lasers. Mm-hmm. It's not shark with lasers. Right. <laughs> it has a brain. It right. knows what it needs to do. And the fact that, you know, in, and it's funny to this, to this day where you really – most people won't do anything unless it personally happens to them. So, like, the mayor finally pulled the trigger when he said, like, well, my own kid was in there too. And that's where he got the trigger of, okay, we got to hire this person. You know, yeah, There's nothing. There's no more. There's no more pistol floating around. Right, the, right. The it's like, and that's it's so interesting because that's what most people do. Like, until it happens to me, I'm not going to do anything about it because that's not my kid and responsibility of that. And that's what yeah. the way the mayor was looking at it as. Yeah, that was definitely how the mayor was looking at it. I know yeah. Brody really wanted to pull the trigger before, right. but he, he kind of let it go and instead he of just being, and being the sheriff. Roy, Roy Scheider did a really good job of making Brody a really believable character that he was doing research on the shark. He was... He was so um, upset about it, you know. Obsessed he couldn't. He couldn't upset, eat. Yeah. You know. Uh, shout out to his uh, his uh, Lorraine Gary playing as Ellen. Even though she didn't get a big part, she, to me she was very meaningful during the scenes that she was with Brody. Oh yeah, she definitely gets the uh, the side character that made the most of her time. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she was definitely that one of that uh, that that particular Ellen, um, his wife. Because every scene that she was in, it was it was meaningful, mm-hmm. and I thought it went well. In fact, you know, there's not a there wasn't an actor in this movie, mm-hmm. and I I think it there wasn't an actor in the movie that was bad. But I'll tell you what, the last half of the movie, the the, the main three, um, yeah, Brody, let's, talk, let's talk about yeah, that. which we talk about Brody, Quentin, Hopper, just absolutely owned the movie, mm-hmm. like at the end, and and that was the beautiful thing about it. What it, it's so cool because it was just. It was literally the three of them on a boat um, and Jaws. That was the mm-hmm. entire end of the movie. Because like, at the same time, you're getting not only a hunt, but you're getting this bonding that they yes. have to work together to defeat this. Because at first, they were kind of like their own separate ways. They both had – well, except for Brody. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Except for Brody. I, would, I Hunt, wouldn't say their own separate ways, but they were they Well, were they had their own methods. They how were they conflicting. Do, yeah, yeah, they were conflicting how to deal with the, the situation. The new the new, the new, new age, the old – Yeah. Like the new school, the old school. Yeah. And the, I don't really have a clue, but I'm on this ride kind of uh, – Right. Um, kind of uh, ordeal. I just want to take care of business. Yeah. And you see the conflict between the three, and then as you see it slowly grow and the walls break down mm-hmm. um, between the three, and they started like bonding with each other. With yeah. In this, in this one menace, uh, you know, Jaws. And shout out to Robert Shaw for that almost four or five minute monologue <laughs> about like his history of why he is the way he is. Yeah. Holy crap. If you're not zooming into that conversation, I don't know what you're doing. You must be on your phone or something, but yeah, I, you got to listen to him. Yeah, like I, that was the other thing that was really good about this movie is just the dialogue. The dialogue was good. Yeah, like the dialogue between the three and just how they were bonded with each other in the story. I think I love I love that scene. Mm-hmm. Like it's 
it seems very kind of like if you tell people just in general it sounds boring until you watch it mm-hmm. and you watch it and you kind of glue into it the next of course every she- scene with the shark the shark stole the movie uh, yeah <laughs> yeah just you just you could it's a slow build right mm-hmm. it's like you know he's a he's a killer machine now how 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 much of a killing machine is he you know one barrel then two barrels, he take it under the water, and he leaves it under the water. Then mm-hmm. three barrels, he take it under the water. He pulls the entire boat. You know, the the shark pulls the entire boat, mm-hmm. um, and then halfway sinks the damn thing, just right. pretty much. And, and uh, it's taken at least what I think six, six or seven victims in this uh, mm-hmm. in this movie. So even Quinn, yeah, even Quinn, mm-hmm. uh, which sucks. <laughs> Clint was really cool, but you knew he was going to go down like his like his mates before. But also, that's not the only star of that movie. The soundtrack was like the next star. That yeah, soundtrack right. was insane. Yeah. I looked at you. I'm like, it's like this music is in, is really good. It's intense. By John Williams, right? Yeah. Um, without I was going to ask you that too. Was without this particular soundtrack or without the without the music and done uh, everything done with John Williams this movie is completely different it is you're right like it it gets you gets your heart racing which is weird cuz i know my heart was racing a couple of times um it catches you off guard it it does enough to play with you it does enough to get you really kind of um feeling the situation like mm. it gets you to feel the situation and it goes long enough to where like you don't really think about it and then it it can hit you with certain things like they set you up um i'll tell you one jump scare that i had was the, i was about the i you're not yeah. i was going to do it uh, yeah. i got it i'll tell you the jump scare i had was the part where where it was just brody and uh hooper or uh, hopper um and hopper goes and researches the boat um at night yeah at night and um, he sees the bite marks into the boat, and then, like, the dead body just pops up. But it's like the music was silent, and then just hits you <laughs> straight. And then the face hits you, and it just threw me back. I was freaked out. So do I was you think out. you would have jumped if the music didn't present itself on that point? I, You know, if they didn't, if I, if I wasn't in tune with whatever was going on with around it, if I wasn't so concentrating on it, I think it not only just the sound alone, but the way they they made you buy it, like really look into the holes, because he found the shark tooth in mm-hmm. one hole or shark tooth in one of the holes. So you're sitting there, it's like, oh, what else will he find? Oh, oh. it's like I'm kind of curious. There's nothing there. There's nothing. Boom, dead body. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think they did a really good job of getting you to getting your focus um, on certain things that they're wanting you to focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, you're feeling based on just like the the sound and the music and thanks the visual effects, uh, which were very simple, mm-hmm. simple visual effects um, that got you just just immersing yourself in the in the movie. Right, because you can tell right here that Steven Spielberg himself managed to only drop about nine million dollars. Yeah, the movie for was that. Budgeted. The movie was budgeted uh, for nine million dollars uh, box office. I think it made what four hundred, yeah, four fifty, yeah. Plus. And the problem, the nine million, most of that money is mostly eh. through like you know, the 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 people on the the beach, the the landscaping, and all that kind probably, of stuff. Yeah, the people. Yeah, yeah, and it's just you know that proves right there that if he, if someone can make a film about a shark like that and spend that much money, then it's almost yeah. like you really don't have excuse for when people do CG that much because the fact that like. He did this with a mechanical shark. Yeah. And it was still freaking believable. Yeah. I wasn't looking at a mechanical shark. I was looking like that was a freaking shark. shark exactly. Which is which is why I'm so excited that eventually we'll get to watch a uh, alien. Mm-hmm. Um because it's just like I said in 2019 we're at 2019 right now at this very moment. Um you watch so many things with CGI that you kind of get attuned to it, right? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And when I see like an, I think it was Alien Covenant where I was watching and I just kind of got tired. I was like, you know, whatever happened to those days where you just had to figure it out to make it work, right? Mm-hmm. And movies like Jaws, movies like Alien, and it, you know, 1975, Jaws was made in 1975. And yet, I still 
had every feeling of suspense, every feeling of needing to find out what the shark's all about. The jump scare. Um, it's insane to mm. to know that I can still feel that way like now after just being attuned to everything else that is currently out. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- um, before we go to the next yeah. one, were you did this did you, did this movie um, fulfilled what you were hoping for going back to this? You know, yeah. Um, actually, it, you know, as an adult, I enjoy it more than I did as a kid. As a kid, I was scared to death. Like you were talking about the the death scene with the. Uh, with the kid and the uh, and the floaty, mm-hmm. I was probably traumatized after I saw that as a kid. <laughs> now that I'm, I sit there and think about it, because you just, you just, the dude's gushing. It's just gushing. It's horrible. I think that just threw me off the most. Like I know that kid's gonna die. I just didn't know it was gonna go out like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You didn't even see the shark. No. You just you saw him twirling around, and then you just see blood and stuff mm-hmm. gushing out, and you're just like. <gasps> Oh my God! And I think that's what you were wanting for in episode zero, where you like movies to take a risk. They took a risk of ch- ch- trying to do this death in a different way instead of just sinking it down. Let's say, let's make, let's get people yeah. scared. That's what the goal was to make this m- people get scared. Yeah, get scared and get, mm-hmm. and then just go. Oh yeah, we know the sharks a killing machine. Yeah. Uh, so I mentioned I mentioned this too. The subtleties in the movie too, besides just the music, the subtleties that help you help build the tension and then i'll give you one thing for example is like um when the shark bites the the fishing or not uh, bites the fishing pole but bites whatever the bait is on the fishing pole and you hear a click 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 yeah that was good click click, click that click, was click. good and you're just like all right did he catch it did he not Oh, dude, I love the part he was getting ready for it oh right that and was intense like <laughs> he he knew while everybody else was just kind of like you know doing whatever they do um mm. one was just shoveling food out <laughs> to the ocean and uh, uh yeah uh mm-hmm. brody was shoveling food out to the the the, the water and uh hooper or hopper was a uh, up top just driving along right but just just that little just like something that that makes him just slowly hooking because he know he, he he's caught something big mm-hmm. you're just like you you get into you're just like oh stuff is about to happen right this is it's like this is your cue that stuff is about to happen mm-hmm. and that's like subtle things like that throughout the movie um, was wonderful in how it built the suspense yeah, yeah. Um, final thoughts on uh, final thoughts on on just one um, before we get to categories um, I wish that I didn't sleep on this uh, I wish I saw this movie earlier my dad liked it my my father loves this movie but I was I was so skeptical about it cause I was like. You know, cause I got the I got the deep blue sea system in my body. Like it's a shark movie. I don't know yeah. how interesting, but I should have not slept on Steven Spielberg. Like hmm, somehow he would have made something cool out of out of a shark, I guess. Yeah. But I just yeah. well, you know what's and, I, and now you're gonna have a pretty good conversation with your pops about mm-hmm. it. Like to me, it's just like it boggles my mind. I sit there and think to myself, this is a 1975 movie, and I can still watch this movie today and still yeah. And still be like, this is a pretty damn good shark movie. Like, there's no. Yeah, if it ever comes back in theaters for like, you know, some the movie theaters do like, you know, old school movies in there, I will probably spend some money to go see just yeah. to see how it feels to be in the theater. I tell you what, though, I'm kind of happy I wasn't in the lazy river when I watched this. Watched this movie. <laughs> right, like oh you man, this before. is like legit would kind of creep me out. I don't know why. Um, why I was thinking that would be a good move, yeah. <laughs> um, but it would yeah. creep me out. So three categories that we got. Over to the categories. Three categories that we got. We're gonna go with the first one. So, um, if could we switch any of the cast members within the roles? I honestly think if you did, if it it just wouldn't work. Everybody else was so good what they were doing. It's like it doesn't make any sense. Everybody looked what they look like for that role. I just the, no, the, I like, can't, I can't see any changes. Like it was that's like, nuts. It, like it suits everybody. Yeah, right? everybody played played it perfectly what they were supposed to do. I tell you, I feel the same way, and especially when you talk to talk about uh, Brody, Quint, and Hooper, uh, Hopper, mm-hmm. Hooper, Hopper, whatever, yeah. whichever one. <laughs> Richard Dreyfus. That's that's what I'm going to just tell you guys. Uh, between those three, you just couldn't mix any of them. They were so. It was interesting because you know. Quentin and Hooper are two polar opposites, and then you just had the mediator who was Brody, right? Right. And just they did so well, so well with their characters mm-hmm. that it's so believable that it, it's hard to see any of those three get switched out for for mm-hmm. anything. I mean, I, I agree with you. Any of the actors that are currently in the movie couldn't really get switched out with any other actors. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the other category that we have was uh would this movie be better with Christopher Walken in it? Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> it is always yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh um, who I'll, who would you, who could you put Christopher Walken? I I honestly for? put him on Quint. Would you would I you think put, I think I think he could pull off the Quint. I think he could do that long speech. I think Christopher Walken could have a serious lo- monologue. Yeah. I've seen it before. I, I think he can do it. Yeah, he can do the monologues easily. Yeah, right? I think That's he can do Quinn. I think he can do Quinn. I think he can scratch that thing and say, you want to take down this shock? I can fight it for 3000 but it's going to be 10000 you want me to take it down. You want me to kill him? <laughs> I, 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 no matter no matter how, how good the impression is of uh, Christopher Walken, I can promise and guarantee you that I can do it poorly right so and the only reason i would put him as bro for brody for two seconds just to say we need a bigger bow that's yeah. it that's it but honestly like for a role i can see him as more of a of a quinn he yeah, just quinn. he has that look of he's seen some things yeah. <laughs> I, so I'll, I'll give you two nom- uh two more nominees on top of that so you say quinn i say he played quinn um honestly i think he could play the mayor that was. I think he. I think he could play the mayor. Play the mayor. Yeah. It's like, come on! This is a shock. Yeah. It's just a shock. What you do is you go up and you stab it with Salina. Right. (laughs) I know Timmy's dead out there, but it's okay. (laughs) We go to get him. You gonna? You're gonna have to make a new Timmy. Right. (laughs) We can get him after the Fourth of July weekend. We will go after him. (laughs) So, uh, guys, in the meeting, come closer. (laughs) Closer. (laughs) Come closer. Um. I see him as as the mayor. I'll give you another one. Um, I, if I, I had to pick one no, no, more, I mean, I'll give you one. Well, you're giving me one. Yeah, I'll give you one. Um, he is. <laughs> I okay, 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 okay. I think that he could be. Um, <laughs> he could be the the old couple that the mayor goes oh, out. Wow. And he tells him to go out there. And he's like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little so, cameo. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, those, those are my so, three. So those are your three. All right. So we both agree on the mayor because I definitely can see him as a mayor. I'll give you another one. He's, he plays the shark. He's the shark? You want to be the shark? <laughs> Come over here. Yeah. <laughs> you shot two barrels. Yeah. <laughs> two barrels in my back. <laughs> three now? We do a three? <laughs> three barrels? Right. So. Uh, Come here. Come closer. <laughs> don't let uh, me tell you again. <laughs> don't let me t- t- again. <laughs> and then uh, what's your third one? Oh no, I was just. Oh okay, okay, I, okay. Yeah, I think he could play those two, and and he would have to be a side character or another side character mm-hmm. um, in the movie. So he probably could have played like uh, Brody's uh, deputy. <laughs> it's just we need more help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can like, see that. You should go talk to them. You talk their language. I'm from New York. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm from here. I'm an islander. <laughs> Right, um, but uh, definitely, definitely. By the so, way, great line on Brody's part. I was like, you know, a guy that that's afraid of, afraid of water lives on an island. I said, well, it's, you know, from a person from the water, doesn't it look like an island? I forgot <laughs> the line, but it was it was it, made, it was <laughs> like a, it was a good turn your head and think about it. And you're like, huh? That makes like, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. For a person who's afraid of water, or who's afraid of water, you live on an island. It's like, well, it doesn't look like an island if you're from, if you're from, uh, if you're looking from the water, yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good, it was a good. <laughs> it line. was funny. Yeah. So um, the other category is, is insert, tell me what you want. So insert something in the movie that would make this movie better. Um, Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> that, we're oh, that's done. A, that's a give. I know, right? That's Clipboard drop. We're done. That's Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, honestly. Um, you do this one. What do you think? Um, you know, I really don't have anything to really put on it. I think this movie was pretty solid from from start to finish. Um, you know, they kind of covered the basis of everything else. I want. I, I guess if you were to insert anything. Maybe a little bit more of the ending instead of just ending it, them getting to shore. Mm-hmm. But I think with them ending it there, there's no. I like that ending. Yeah, I was like, I feel like I feel like less is more. Like I, I don't really need well, to know. I think they, people they conquered the shark. I think people want to have that acknowledge that. And honestly, I think the scene everybody would want at the end is just his wife seeing him again. 
and yeah. just being that. That's all we want. But we know that's going to happen the moment we swim. So why put the scene in there? Yeah. You know they made it out alive. We don't need this extra, but people just want that closure of we just want to at least see them acknowledge each other that, that you know, they see each other. But yeah. we, I like that ending. Yeah. I like that ending. So, I mean, I, I think that was – I think – I think the ending is fine, but I mean, if I were to nitpick at something, it would be like that, or um, you would get. I, I don't know more I, I more, just, more death on the beaches. I, no, I think that actually I would like to see was when when the shark was fighting Brody towards the end. It would have been cool to see Ho- Hopper uh, Hooper come out with that spear that he dropped. To, to help do a finishing blow. Oh, there you I go. think that would have been a fantastic scene. To have something Yeah, because he just kind of sat on the sideline, which I understand. I mean, you're like you at the, really, the water. Yeah, you, I mean, you're in the water. You're at the d- disadvantage, you yeah. know? But it would have been cool to be surprised that, like, he could have came and just attempt to stab him. He might not have killed him. Yeah. They still have to blow him up. But just the fact he put his two cents in, he's like, boom, I got you. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he's the distraction or something while, like, swimming towards him, yeah. towards um, Brody, and then he just shoots Pass uh, Hooper shoots the tape, blows up. I that think would, that would have been a cool. That would be hysterical. He like he swims up really fast, gets out of the water, does like a Superman punch with the right. har- harpoon, hooks him, and then or just you know holds Brad on. Pitt from Troy, that little yeah, that little yeah, yeah. Then he just hangs onto the pole, and the, the shark just takes him on for a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be kind of funny. yeah. I think that it would be funny, but I mean it would be kind of cool looking. But it definitely that part wouldn't. What I said wouldn't fit in the movie. Right, I definitely see. Uh, it would be a nice conclusion to have to have something happen with the harpoon that fell to the water and him having to leave the cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the honestly that's the only thing I can, and that's really more of an additional to the scene that there was already happened. Not well, a, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. No, the question yeah, is yeah. whether it would make it better, right? It would, mm-hmm. it would at least conclude it in mm-hmm. some in some senses, like the ending, like an ending that that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I have on. one more, and maybe you could disagree, maybe you agree or disagree. I think both ways are just fine, but maybe you might insert that the actually um, maybe the mayor's son could have got killed. Yeah, that oh, actually, been that, and that might have been a, a quick reality of like I would sign those papers in a second. Yeah, you know, a part of me just has the whole Batman mentality. Is this is like, um. It's not only just his son. I don't necessarily think his son gets killed, but you know how he was dodging the whole, uh, dodging the whole. It's a shark. Don't mm-hmm. be afraid. It's a shark. It's mm-hmm. not a shark. Da 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 da. The mayor. Like uh, yeah. yeah. Like I feel like that would be one of the moments if one of our categories was uh, if the Avengers could save the day, that <laughs> that you know somebody like uh, actually I'd hope it, I would rather it be uh, like the Justice League if the Justice League could save the day, that Batman would just tie him up and just dump him in the water. And just just watch him squirm. What, you don't think Aquaman would be there? No. <laughs> Aquaman, stop that big white shark, man. That big white shark ain't having nothing of it. He's like, you talking to me? Yeah. You speaking you speaking fish? Yeah. yeah. Well, then listen to this. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it's like, why don't you, you can go, stop me. Why don't, you go, why don't you go back to land and walk with those legs <laughs> of yours? That's exactly what Jaws would say. His name's not <laughs> Jaws, which is a great, yeah, with Christopher Walken's voice. Oh, so you can talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. You can hear what I said. Now get out of here. <laughs> yeah, now get out. <laughs> this is what I own. <laughs> this is I own this place. But no, those are the two scenes I like. I would have liked to see Hooper um, get it, get one hit in of the shark, yeah. and then uh, maybe uh, the mayor, Mayor Vaughn's son, maybe. I, got I agree. Shark. I, I like. I feel like the mayor should get should get more punishment for the stupidity mm-hmm. that he is. I, yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah. All right. So Rotten Tomatoes gave it nothing but positive scores, but the viewers gave it a ninety percent, and critics gave it a ninety-seven. So ninety-seven out of what? 79 so I mean, it's an older movie so 79 mm-hmm. 97 out of 79 is pretty pretty good yeah um 90 out of 943,000 is good too <laughs> yeah a 90 out of basically almost 1 million uh 1 million reviews mm-hmm. um your turn i will lean towards the critics surprisingly enough yeah um i thought about leaning towards the the audience score but I have to think, man. This is a 1975. <laughs> like uh-huh. I, I know I said that like 20 times throughout this this entire time we recorded, but I've never. I don't. I'm surprised that I could. There was so much emotion and so much fun that I can put into a movie like this in a different way, like compared to like Big or something that you know we watched before. Um, I think the I think like the cinematography, the actors were excellent. The music was fine. Everything they did to make you feel like you were in the actual movie, 
um, the suspense is insane. Um, I lean towards the critics on this one. I'll give it a near perfect score. Um, I'm a 97 too. Um, I was in the zone. Uh, <laughs> and the fact that I applaud that it's a shark movie. Yeah. And you made it interesting. Yeah. And it, it's crazy. Like the second half of the movie is just one scene. Like just, there's only one area. It's, it's one voyage. It's, it's the it's the boat. Yeah. And it's water. You get me interested for two hours. Yeah. That last hour. The last hour was what? just uh, yeah. one, one area. You yeah. were just one area. You kept me completely. One yeah. area purely script and purely acting. Yeah. It's yeah. just insane. Yeah. So like. It's not phone booth because phone booth wasn't any good. <laughs> no. No. But you have to appreciate like the 90. I think the 90 percent of the audience could have been the slowness. There was some slow moments. Yeah. And that was the that was the second half. It was slow, but it paid off. Yes. When that shark finally got some action in, it paid off, and that's why I think that ninety seven. But ninety, I can see the people maybe saying like, "It's good, but it felt a little, it felt too slow to get to the point." I can yeah, see that. I can see some people feeling that way. And I mean, and if you really want to see like specific reviews, you can always go to Rotten yeah. Tomatoes and click on uh, the audience scores and see what they say. And of course. You can do the same thing with the critics, which mm -hmm. they're always kind of fun to read because it, compared to what your own uh, your own thoughts and stuff like that, you, you kind of want to see uh, people do it. Mm. And I love that poster. That poster, I love that poster more now. Oh, iconic, After watching right? the movie, yeah. yeah. One of the most iconic posters there is. It's like, it's like one of the ones that you want to have in like a movie room yeah. at home or something. I might have to get that poster. One day yeah. if I get a nice theater room at home, I'll, yeah. I'll have to do the same thing. Well, any uh, final thoughts before we wrap this up? Uh no, I I think I know I'm probably missing stuff. Um, I things. recommend. Every, I don't care if you don't think this will interest you. I think it's, it's it should be looked at. Yeah, you should definitely check it out. Um, I will tell you, it's a hard PG, like hard PG. <laughs> Who are you telling? <laughs> like they didn't. Okay, so The Exorcist I think was in '79. Uh, um, they didn't change the ratings until until The Exorcist came out, where they took that even further. Um, mm -hmm. Than PG and uh, so a lot of the movies that you'll watch like oh, before then will be more. It PG. makes me wonder, Nam, what, what was an R? R? What was a RB? Yeah, so it has to be like way more nudity and way more carnage than what they did. So we're gonna have to choose a movie for the audience that was something pre pre 1980 that is a rated R movie before The Exorcist, right? And then see the difference and talk about it for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Which which is going to be amazing when we do. Right. So, um, to find more information about this show and our other shows, don't forget we are part of the In Game Boss program, a network of gaming and other variety shows, just like my uh, my show, the In Game Boss podcast, the Cabinet Sessions, and more shows on the way, like the Memory Card and all this stuff. So definitely visit us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Popbean. Make sure you like and subscribe. Tell us if we're doing great. To tell us if we're doing bad. Do you like sharks? Do you not like sharks? Do you like Steven Spielberg? Do you wonder why Steven Spielberg did not come to his uh, the showing of the film? Uh, do you think? The last day of filming. Do yeah. you like Shark? Yeah, last day of of the filming. Uh, do you like Shark Week? Check out this movie; it's a great film. But remember, you can always leave a five star rating telling us how we're doing. But if you want to talk to me personally, you can always email me at the in game office at gmail .com. But also on Twitter, you can email me personally or talk to me as retroram zero seven and Nam. Yeah. Um. By all means, please, please at, at the very least check out the check out the podcast. Whether you leave a five star or subscribe is uh, is on to you. If you like our content, then please do. Um, you can find me at the KN Tran on the Twitter. And remember, we're on Facebook, so just make sure you search for the Ink Game Boss program. And for more information, most of the time we'll have a trailer out before the before the premiere to kind of you know get you set up, and then you can come listen to us. Uh, we enjoy everybody that are listening and enjoying the show and everything like that. And we will catch you on our next episode. You know, even if they had a bigger boat, I really don't think it's going to help. No, no, because the fact that that shark was the size of about half the size of the boat. That it they was, it was, I'm just wondering, maybe I was just a little disappointed that the fact they didn't use all six barrels, I kind of wanted yeah. to see if they what happened if they use all six shot. barrels. Maybe that's the scene I would add in, like use all the barrels. Yeah, there you go. One shark, six barrels, coming soon to a theater near you. That's Joss too. <laughs>